Hello guys and welcome to this webinar to discuss published studies, all right? So first of all, why, uh, what is the purpose of the published article? So, okay, so why there is an article? You guys need to remember that, and I will be very quick here because this is just a review, the articles will always start with an introduction, right? So the introduction of the article is basically telling uh, the reader uh, why this article is important. Okay, so the introduction is the justification that the author had to create this research project, right? And then uh, we, that's why the introduction is important. So they are finding things in the literature that uh, compelled them or that directed them to uh, study a related topic and that's the article that you guys are reading, right? So that's the purpose of an introduction. The material methods of the article will be how they did it, right? So that's uh, the methods they are that they used, and of course the last part of the material methods will be the statistical analysis, which is the one that we are going to discuss today about those published articles. Okay, uh, and then we have the results. So of course they want to show the readers. Uh, what they found and why this is important to science, okay? And that's why they also need a section uh, to talk about the, uh, the discussion. So what is the discussion of an article? The discussion, which is basically one of the most important parts of the article, is uh, the, when they compare their own findings with the findings of similar articles in the literature, all right? And then we have the conclusion, which is basically the take-home message that can be uh, concluded from all the findings that they had. Okay, so uh, let's start with this first article. So the title, I'm going to talk about three articles that we published uh, before, and this is the first one entitled Effect of Photodynamic Therapy with Malachite Green on Non-Surgical Periodontal Treatment in HIV Patients, right? So that's a pilot split mouth study, okay? Very well, so we know that this uh, split mouth study, so we already expect our statistical tests to be for dependent samples, right? Uh, we are comparing what here? We are comparing the photodynamic therapy, so that's the use of laser, right? With something else, which is the malachite green, so that's a, that's a substance that they use with the laser, okay, to improve the effects of the laser, right? So I'm not going into details about this, uh, that's just uh, for you guys to understand a little bit of the purpose of this study, right? So we have here, uh, of course, the material methods, and then we have the statistical analysis here, right? So let's see what they did here. They are saying in the statistical analysis that they calculated relative risk, and that's uh, also an association uh, analysis just like the chi-square, so between qualitative variables, okay? But this one was not covered in the webinar of before because that's for postgraduate level, okay? So they are doing relative risk. We already uh, know that the cross tabs will be, you know, showing up in our, in our study and then they are comparing uh, two groups uh, uh, for non-continual variables, right? Uh, since this is a split mouth design, they didn't have to adjust uh, for other factors because, for example, if the patient has diabetes, for example, they are comparing one side of this patient with the other side of the same patient, so diabetes is actually affecting the results of both groups. So that's why they are saying that they are not adjusting the results. All right. So uh, then we have here uh, the use of Friedman tests, right? So they are using Friedman tests to assess those differences. So let's see what they got here. Those are the results. So they are just describing the results, uh, central tendencies, so the age, uh, the frequencies of genders as well, because it's a qualitative variable. And then they have this first table. So I'm talking about table one of this article which is a cross tabs, right? It's a cross table. So we have here uh, many variables being compared with treatment type, and that's the main comparison of the study, okay? So SRP would stands for uh, scaling and root planning, and SRP plus PDT is, of course, the scaling and root planning, 
with the use of laser, so photodynamic therapy, right? So that's what, that would be the test group. And they are not calculating chi-square, but they could calculate chi-square chi as well. And you guys have also the p-values. Relative risk, we also uh, have the relative risk numbers, which are also important, but again, we are not covering this in this uh, webinar, right? And then they have uh, all uh, important uh, qualitative variables for uh, perio and, and uh, you know those things. So they have bleeding on probing, and that's a, a nominal variable, no or yes. So it's a binary variable here. They have uh, the PCR for uh, AA. They have uh, and three types of PCR, and then they have which are laboratory tests of uh, molecular biology, and then they have the periodontal probing death. So uh, they also categorized the periodontal probe in depth uh, more than four millimeters, less than four millimeters. So they turned this variable into a qualitative variable as well. Okay, then they used the cross tabs, and for the comparisons, they used uh, so they used Friedman's test, right? Uh, the p value of the Friedman test is being shown in the graph, okay? But then, of course, you guys are seeing a line graph, not a bar graph. So why they are not showing the results in a bar graph and, yes, in a line graph? Because the results are being shown over time, right? So we have three different results. We have the baseline, we have after 45 days, and the same patients were followed up up to three months and then uh, this evolution is being shown in a line graph which is the correct type of graph for this situation all right but you still ha have the p-value of Friedman and they are saying that the Friedman was uh, significant right so the Friedman test was uh, below 0.05 they are saying in a general way like that which shows that uh, the laser was uh, actually influencing significantly the results of uh, this uh, the periodontal treatment for those uh, patients of this study, which is a sample of HIV patients. All right, so uh, those are the main findings of this study, at least uh, the main uh, description of the statistical analysis. Let's see the second study of this webinar which is an article of radiology. So the title is Diffusion Weighted MRI. So MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging for differentiation between two alterations, two diseases. One is sialadenitis, the simple inflammation of the salivary glands, and the other one is the pleomorphic adenoma, which is actually a tumor, right? So uh, let's see uh, what we got here. So we have uh, the comparison uh, of course, this is a comparison, and then you guys can see the table one showing uh, the groups comparison, right? Uh, please realize that here we have three groups. So we have, for the parotid glands, we have three groups. We have the normal parotid glands, we have the glands with sialadenitis, and we have the glands with pleomorphic adenoma. And we are measuring a number that comes from the MRI examination, which is the diffusion uh, coefficient, right? Uh, and uh, this is uh, the comparison of this study, and we can see that the p-value was absolutely significant, which is saying to us that the ADC value, so the diffusion coefficient value, could differentiate uh, the conditions that we are seeing uh, in those groups, okay? For some mandibular glands, though, we have only two groups, and that's why uh, the test used is not ANOVA, it's the T-test, you guys can see uh, in the captions of this table, and no significant differences were found. So, actually, the pleomorphic adenoma is the condition being differentiated by this, uh, this number, right? This, this type of uh, quantitative examination using the magnetic resonance imaging device, all right? To show that, we created this graph. So we have a bar graph here, like a normal comparison graph. We have the values of the ADC. We are talking about mean values because normality was confirmed, okay? We use the Shapiro-Wilk test. Uh, this is being said there as well. And then you guys can see the differences for parotid gland. Right? Uh, the same differences are not observed for submandibular gland. The graph is very clear about that. And the star that you guys are seeing, or the asterisk that you guys are seeing, 
uh, in the parotid gland group is telling us that the difference is indeed significant according to the ANOVA test, right? Or the T-test if we are talking about two groups only. All right. And then we have uh, uh, different. Com uh, we have the comparison for uh, when we include pleomorphic adenoma in this case, and that, that's why the second graph is about the ANOVA test because it's the only comparison including the three conditions, and then we already know that the p-value is significant, right? So uh, that's the take-home message of this study. Uh, pleomorphic adenomas can be detected by the use of ADC values. Uh, from magnetic resonance imaging examinations, right? So this was what we found here. Very good. And the third and last paper uh, of this webinar is basically a paper on, uh, on laser as well. So this is a microcomputed tomographic examination and histomorphometric is, is analysis, which is a bone morphometric analysis of human alveolar bone repair, so after the extraction, how the socket is repairing uh, after being induced by laser phototherapy. Okay, uh, of course we have here two groups as well, so I'm going just to show, uh, so we have the table one, which is a descriptive table. We are seeing the uh, gender of the patients because this is a pilot study, you guys have actually individual data of all patients, right? So. Technically, this is uh, more of an individual table, or, although it's not showing all the variables here. Okay, but we have data of all the 10 patients of each groups. Okay, and then we have the pictures, and then we have table 2, uh, which is only the parameters of the micro CT. And then we have table 4, uh, which is the most important one here, right? So table 4 is showing us the four variables that we have and then the, the median, uh, sorry, the mean and the standard deviation results uh, of the two groups, the control group and the laser group, which is the one with, uh, of course, with the laser phototherapy, and the p-value telling us the difference between those two groups, right? And we, you guys can see that uh, for bone volume, the volume being uh, recovered with laser is more than the, the bone volume being recovered without laser and the p-value lower than 0.05 is telling us that this difference is significant. All right, the test that they used here is the student t-test because normality was confirmed also for this sample, right? Uh, you guys can see that uh, there are other tables, there are other uh, variables and other types of comparisons but the main comparison is being shown in a bar graph, right? So we have a bar graph on figure 4. The graph here is actually <clears throat> showing the percentage of bone, which is a variable, but we have the, the central tendencies of each group being represented in those uh, bars, right? And the laser group is, of course, uh, higher and significantly higher than the control group, which is showing that the laser phototherapy with the protocol that uh, uh, we used here was uh, significant better for bone healing as compared to you know, the normal bone healing without the laser. Okay, so this uh, was the analysis of those three studies and see you guys in the next webinar.